So in this session, we're going to take our first look at data tidying or data wrangling. Very often when you load your data into your computer, it's not actually in the sort of structure that you need in order to do your data visualizations and data analysis. So we're going to be working with a data set that's part of the tidyverse. So the first thing we do is we go over to our R session. We're going to create a new project. I'm going to create a new directory. I'm going to call it something like data wrangling. Create the new project. So it's going to restart the R session. Okay, so we're in the new folder now that we created. You can see down here, we've got a data wrangling folder. I'm going to create a new R script. So I said, we're using a data set that's in the tidyverse. So we can just load the tidyverse to get the data set that we need. We're going to be using a data set called MPG. This is a data set that includes information about different cars and different car manufacturers. It's a, a data set that was collected between 1999 and 2008 in the US. So it's very sort of US centric in terms of how it's labeling things. But broadly speaking, it contains uh, it's a data frame with 234 rows and 11 different sorts of variables. So we're going to start our script. Now, the first thing we're going to do, you can see up here, it's simply called untitled one at the moment. We're going to save it. Uh, and we're just going to call it something like data wrangling script. Okay, so let's save now and we can see it down here. Okay, so we're loading the tidyverse. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to investigate this data set. So it's actually called MPG. So if we type head MPG, that'll give us the first six rows of this uh, data set. So we can see here information about the first six rows. We can also use the function str, which stands for structure, and that gives us information about the structure of the data frames that tells us. We've got 234 rows and 11 columns. The columns are labeled manufacturer, model, displacement, year, etc. We're also given some quite useful information about each of the columns because we're told that the first two columns are of type character, so alphanumeric characters. Displacement, which is a measure of um, kind of engine size or number of cylinders, uh, or number of liters rather, is given as a number. Year is given as an integer, it's in whole numbers, etc., etc. So we can get some information about our data frame using these two functions. If we wanted to, we could simply type MPG down here in the console, and we'd actually get a display of the, uh, of the first 10 rows of the data frame, and a bit more information about it. So what we're gonna do uh, up in our script is we're going to use some functions from the tidyverse that allow us to uh, kind of understand and interact and engage with our data frame. So we're going to take our data frame, which is called MPG. We're going to use this little operator here. It's called the pipe. It's percentage greater than percentage, and you read it as meaning and then, okay? So we're taking our data frame, and then we're going to select from that data frame the column manufacturer, okay? So let's run that. And what we get is basically that one column from the data frame, it's a list of uh, all, the, all the manufacturers. So it's just taking that first column called manufacturer from our data frame. What we might be more interested to do is in working out the number of distinct or unique manufacturers we have, okay? So we're gonna use a function called distinct and we can run the code like this. So we're taking our data frame, MPG, and then we're using the function distinct over the variable or column name manufacturer. And down here, we see there, we've got 15 unique manufacturers in our data frame. So we're able to extract something that's kind of a little bit useful out of this data frame. Perhaps we're interested only in cars made by Honda. So we might want to filter on the basis of uh, certain rows so we're going to do that in the same sort of way, MPG, and then filter manufacturer. 
And then we're going to use the logical operator equals equals, which means is equal to Honda. Okay, so if we were to run this bit of code, we actually get in the output down here only those rows where the manufacturer is equal to Honda. Okay, so perhaps we're interested in a couple of Japanese car manufacturers. Maybe it's not just Honda we want to see information about. Maybe we want to see information also about Toyota vehicles. So we're going to use um, a logical operator called OR, which is just indicated by this little vertical line here. So we're going to take our data frame and then we're going to filter for cases when manufacturer is equal to Honda or manufacturer is equal to Toyota. And if we run that, we kind of see down here, we're getting those rows where we have Toyotas and Hondas. So we can do things, uh, you know, we can combine these together. We might be interested in saying cases of Hondas that were made in the year 1999. So instead of the logical operator OR, we can use the little ampersand symbol, which stands for logical AND. So we can say we want to filter for cases when the manufacturer is Honda and the year is 1999. And if we run that bit of code, we get done here, those cases where manufacturer is Honda and it's a car that was made in the year 1999. So filter is a very simple function, but he, you can use it in quite clever ways to kind of really focus in on the subset of a data frame that you might be most interested in. So we can c combine things together at this point. We've used select and we've used filter, so let's combine them. So rather than simply displaying the output at this point, I'm going to pipe the output into select where I'm going to select uh, four variables, manufacture, year, city, fuel economy, and highway fuel economy. If we run this bit of code, you see here we've got Hondas near 1999, and we get the city fuel economy and highway fuel economy associated with them. So this operator here, the Piper operator, is exceptionally useful for building up a whole chain of instructions that follow one after each other. So we can, you know, look at something maybe slightly different now. If we go up, uh, back up to line 10, we were looking um, at, the, at the distinct manufacturers. Um, maybe we actually, rather than printing, uh, printing those manufacturers, we might want to count them. So if we can go up here and we can modify our script and rerun this bit of code here. And rather now than getting all the names of those 15 manufacturers, because we've used the count function, we've now been, we're now being given the total number, number of distinct, distinct manufacturers that there are. So when we look at our data frame, MPG, we kind of see it's, you know, it's not pretty. All the columns up here are in lowercase. The instances of the cars are all in lowercase as well, the manufacturers and the models. So let's actually start tidying things up a little bit. We're going to use a function called mutate. Mutate is a way in which you either create a new column or change an existing column. So we're going to mutate the column that's currently manufacture, and we're going to use a function called string to title. And what that will do is actually convert to title case everything in this column. So let's just run it and, see what, and you'll see what I mean. So at the moment, Audi, as you'll see, is all in lowercase. If we run that function, we now get all the cases, all the instances in the manufacturer column now being written in title case. Model is still in lowercase, so we can actually go up and modify our code here, where we're going to add an extra uh, bit in the mutate, so it's not just manufacturer that we're mutating now. We're also going to mutate model. So if we run that, we can now see that the model column is now mutated to be in title case as well. So it's quite a good way of tidying things up. So perhaps we only want to select a small number of columns again, maybe in this case, rather than all of these columns, we might want the manufacturer, the model, the year, transmission type, and then highway fuel economy. So what we can start to do is put a pipe at the end here. But you'll notice this has gone beyond my 80 character limit, 
and I quite like it uh, when my code doesn't go beyond this limit. I like keeping it readable. So I'm going to put a carriage return in there and R will basically ignore that return and just keep reading the code. So we're going to then, after our mutate, we're going to do another pipe and then we're going to select the columns, manufacturer, model, year, transmission, and highway. And down here, that's what we get in the output. We're still get, we still have the mutate going on, so we've got the manufacturer and model in title case, and then we're selecting these five columns. So that was just a very brief introduction to filtering, selecting, mutating, and working out a few bits of information associated with combining those together. We're now going to move on to uh, recoding variables, which is something that you'll probably find really useful. So we're going to skip down to in our worksheet to the section on recoding variables. Um, let's just go there. Okay, so we're going to read in a data set that I've created. It's from an experiment, a sort of fictitious experiment. Uh, it's a experiment that's a two by two factorial design. That means we've got two experimental factors and each of those factors has got two levels associated with them, okay? It's actually a priming experiment where factor one is prime and factor two is the target. Um, and the data, as the data is currently stored, is a little bit messy and doesn't really reflect the structure of our experimental design. So we can load my messy data in from uh, my website we can look at the first six rows of it, and you'll see what I mean when I say it's messy. Because we, I said we've got two experimental factors, uh, but those have actually been coded together in one, condition, one column that's simply called condition. So condition as a column with the variable names one, two, three, four, really doesn't capture the structure of our experiment. And it's really important when you're building visualizations or when you're doing statistical modeling, that you're basically working with data that accurately reflect the structure of your experimental design. So we're gonna be taking this condition column and we're gonna be tidying it and actually breaking it apart into two separate experimental factors. So we do need to do this in a few different stages. The first thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna start with our data frame, minus the data, and then we're going to use mutate again, but we're going to do something a bit different now. We're actually going to recode the column condition so that it better reflects our experimental design. Uh, condition one, as it's in, in, our, as, as in our data frame, actually corresponds to our first factor prime in version A and our first factor target in version A. The condition that's coded two in our data set, um, for example, actually reflects our first factor prime A and our second factor in version B. Okay, so this simply reflects experimental design when I set it up. So what we're doing by recoding all of this is ensuring that the coding in our data frame is an accurate reflection of the coding in our experimental design. And this is really important to check that you've got this. Okay, so condition four is prime B, target B. Okay, so it looks like that. And then we can just ask for the first um, you know, six rows of this recoded data frame just to check to make sure that it's doing what we think it is. And if we look down, that's great. We don't have condition coded as one, two, three, four anymore. We've got it coded in a much more sensible manner. But really what we want to be doing is splitting that one column that's called condition into two separate columns, one for prime and one for target, okay? So we're gonna modify the code that we've been writing up here starting on line 27 on my machine. And rather than pr printing the first six rows at the end of this uh, bit of the pipeline, we're gonna use a function called separate. And we're gonna separate the column that's called condition and we're going to separate that into two separate columns called prime 
and target and that separation is going to be in the basis of spotting the underscore character so basically it's going to do the separation on the basis of the presence of this underscore character here so let's run that little bit of code and you'll see what we have now we don't have one column called condition anymore we've got a column called prime and a column called target with prime a and target b as the two instances that appear in that column and those two columns rather so one thing that we still have to do is we have to change these two columns so that they're not captured or they're not thought of as R by being type character, but they're actually recognized as being experimental factors because factor is actually um, a, a type of variable in R and it means something that's recognized as being a factor in the same way that uh, an experimental factor is. So we just need to do a little bit, one little bit of code here at the end. We're going to use mutate. And we're going to simply convert our prime column and our target column to factors. So we can do that using mutate. So mutate so that prime is equal to prime factor and target is equal to factor target. So prime is equal to factor prime, target is equal to factor target. So if we run that code and look at the output, it's exactly what we want now. We've got prime and target both represented as factors. Now, one thing I want to point out at this point is that we actually haven't saved the result of all of these bits of code. Uh, we've actually taken our original data frame and we've done a bunch of things with it, but we haven't saved it in any way. So what we're going to do is rather than have all of this uh, then print it in the output, um, we're actually going to map it on to a new variable called my tidied data. It's always a good idea to never kind of overwrite your original data file or your original data object or variable. If you're doing any sort of data wrangling or data tidying, create a new variable and map the result of all that tidying and wrangling onto a new variable. If we look over here on the right, in the global environment, we now have a new variable called my tidied data. So if we were to type my tidy data down on the console, we'd actually see we've got the data frame all nicely tidied. We can also click on it up here and open up in a separate little viewing window. Okay, so our script has got uh, the text is in red, so it's not being saved. So let's just save it. Uh, and there we go. We've done our first little bit of data wrangling and data tidying.